super middleweight bout scheduled for 10 three minute rounds. So this battle of Olympic quarter-finalists is underway between boxers from Germany and Ukraine. A more compact fighter wearing the black trunks trimmed with grey and red is Viktor Polyakov. 36 years of age competing in his 16th professional contest tonight. The taller figure wearing the white trunks trimmed with blue and gold is Stefan Hartel. Polyakov was an Olympic quarter-finalist in the 69-kilogram welterweight division back in Athens 2004. Stefan Hartel made it through to the quarter-finals as he establishes a wonderful left jab in London 2012 in the 75-kilogram middleweight division. Left hand to the body wasn't too far away from Polyakov, but the right hand that followed was right on the button, getting behind the left glove of Hartel. Yeah, good, um, good amateur career, good amateur pedigree by Stefan Hartel. He holds a couple of wins over Callum Smith, actually, who's obviously, you know, in the semi-final of, of, of this competition. Um, so, you know, he, he's done it all as an amateur. He's he done well. Now, for me, as a professional fighter, if you want to be if you want to be a successful professional fighter, you've got to be exciting. And one of my criticisms of Hartel so far is he's not the most exciting fighter to watch. He's very good, does him very well, but he's got a great platform now. Oh, he's wobbled. Most certainly is. On the front foot and working away with a winging right hand is Polyakov. Stefan Hartel shaken up in the opening half of this first round. Now getting back to the space of center ring. Good left jab crashes home from Polyakov. And Hartel, to his credit, appears to have shaken that off. But Polyakov not wanting to give him any time to recover or breathe. How badly hurt was he? Because his stance just appeared to betray him a little bit. And Polyakov, well, you see him dropping his hands. This is what he did in his last contest. Best victory of his career when he outpointed the former WBA world belt holder, Giovanni Di Caroli, in Di Caroli's home of Italy. Terrific display last time out back in July. So he comes into this full of confidence. Trying a left hook once again. Hartel now trying to establish his superior length behind a left jab. Anthony's already pointed out that he's got just one solitary win inside the distance, but he's pecking and poking away with that left hand now. But Polyakov able to get inside once again and score with the left to the body. Yeah, not, not a great opening round by Hartel. Um, he's got slow feet. With slow feet, you're always going to be there to take the punches. He took two or three hooks to the head there, and that's where he all went again. Two or three shots to the body, and he, he absorbs them all. Good counter right hand over the top from Hartel, but as we've mentioned, power perhaps not his strong suit, but it was a point scoring shot. Thrusting out a left jab effectively, and that's a cracking right hand from Hartel, catching Polyakov just before the bell. I think that. The last five seconds of that round one all shows Hartel's lack of power. He threw a one-two clean, landed um, landed Ukraine in Polyakov square in the face, and he didn't even move. Didn't even budge. Polyakov shook his face and came swinging back. So um, if Hartel's going to win this fight, he's going to win it on boxing, boxing skills, not power. Some of the action from that opening round. Polyakov really having success with his hooks. That's the shot that left hook there that, that wobbled in one old. <laughs> well, time in finally caught after a tidy removal of the Stall from the blue corner prior to the bell to begin this second round. Polyakov. Competing in what has been a stop-start career. For the 
fifth time in 2017 tonight. Made his debut way back in November 2006. Won his first date, then took two years out as he works away with bustling punches to the body once again. Hartel spins himself off the ropes, fires a right hand, but more success in that exchange from Polyakov. As I was saying earlier, before Hartel got wobbled with that left hook to the head, he's not the most exciting fighter to watch, and I think to be successful in this game, you've got to, you've got to put bums on seats, whether it be in the crowd or the TV. He's got a massive opportunity now on the telly around the world to show the world if he's going to be a good super middleweight fighter. Hopefully, he takes it, but he hasn't started very well in this fight so, so far. Working the ribcage once again is Polyakov. Well, the Sowlands, given his fantastic amateur credentials, that's a wonderful one-two between the guard from Hartel. But given his amateur credentials, they have high hopes that he's going to be their next super middleweight world champion. And when you consider what success the Sowlands have had, at the 168 pound weight division guiding men through to world championship success Arth Abram, Mikel Kessler, Robert Stieglitz Tyron Zoig is the current incumbent of the WBA regular belt George Grove WBA super they're hoping that Hartel can join their rank perfect start to professional career so far there's a trace of blood around his hairline as he takes a thunderous right hand over the top again and just to allow that to resonate in the mind of the judges Polyakov just wound it up outstretched to his right hand side as if to say yeah that's the shot I caught you with and there's going to be more coming if you don't tighten up yeah as if to say there's plenty more that comes from yeah you're right um, the Sowlands have got a tremendous record of bringing through 12 stone fighters um, now, most recently, George Groh is picking up the WBA world title in a tremendous contest. Um, yeah, I mean, if Hartel wants to add his name to that illustrious list, he's going to have to kind of uh, pull some out of the bag here. It's very early in this fight, don't get me wrong. Um, and what Hartel has got over Polyakov is, is, is youth and enthusiasm and fitness. And hopefully, over the 10 rounds, that will come to fruition. Second round in the book. Poor start from Hartel. Poor start, and the fact he's um, he's now got a cut on his head. He's gonna have to kind of deal with it for the remaining eight rounds if the fight goes that far. The venerable German fight figure of Uli Wegner. Issuing the instructions. Miroslav Karabin coaching Viktor Polyakov. There's a burst of punches to the body from the Ukrainian. Hartel retaliating with an explosive burst. And there you can see he's just reaching for that nick on the hairline. Now as injuries go, blood injuries go, not in a bad place. From Hartel's point of view, Still an unwanted distraction that cuts around the hairline for Hartel to deal with. We we'll mentioned the fact it's been a stop start career for Polyakov to this point. After that debut in 2006, good right hand to the head from Hartel. Eight fights through to November 2008. Two years of steady progress, then inactive for almost three years until September 2011. Busy enough once again through to March 2012 with three bouts in that span. And then inactive for five years until February 2017. Brief chat with him yesterday. It wasn't too forthcoming about the reasons behind the inactivity. And it was a less than auspicious return to the boxing ring here in Germany. Losing for the first time in his 12th professional contest. And then drawing after that. Bounce back. With two victories on the spin, including that best ever career win against the former WBA world champion Giovanni De Caroli in July of this year. And that was in Rome. You can see the ambition that despite being 36 years of age, 
still possess it. But that was a wonderful little exchange there because Polyakov had success with Hartel on the ropes. Hartel spun off the center ring and landed with a spearing right hand. Good contest, this one. Yeah, this is a great opportunity for Polyakov to turn up and say, do you know what, I'm not finished. I've lost the fight, I've drawn the fight, it's not over for me. I still fancy myself to become world champion. And if he can get a win over Hartel tonight, he's really going to launch himself onto the forefront of uh, the super middleweight division. Great defense there by Polyakov. A typically strong Ukrainian fighter. They absorb all the punishment in the world and always come back firing. Working the, to the body. Working the body effectively once again, but beautiful straight punches through the guard from Hartel. Nice movement from the waist from Polyakov to avoid to cause those punches to go long, sail over his head. Hartel, for the most part, taking the long route around the boxing ring as Polyakov continuing to invest in body shots, trying to slow the movement down of the man who resides in Berlin. Fighting here at the Hans Martin Schleierhalle for the first time. Bustling activity with the hands once again. A little bit of holding and hitting spotted by the referee. Terrific work to the body once again. Three left hooks in succession, but then look at the turn of the feet from Hartel. He followed that up with a good right hand. But given the volume of punches landed, the left hook upstairs was blocked. But the two-shot success to the body, perhaps giving Polyakov the better of that. Surprisingly, at 36 years old, Polyakov, he's got fast hands. He's got really fast hands for... Uh... For an older fighter, for a guy who's been inactive for a long time, they always say inactivity is the fighter's worst enemy. Um, but he's, he's come back off, off, off long spells of inactivity, and he's got great hand speed and, and a lot of power and spite in the punches as well. Another 2 3 to the body there. Not a lot of getting through, but Hartel's just throwing three, four punches back, and not a lot has got through from him either. Just a reminder that next week, the World Boxing Super Series. Quarter-final action continues. George Groves, the WBA super, super middleweight champion of the world, squaring off against Jamie Cox at Wembley Arena. Tournament number one seed opening his campaign in the World Boxing Super Series next weekend. And the winner from that quarter-final will meet the winner from tonight's quarter-final. Topping the bill here in the hands, Martin Schleyerhalle is Chris Eubank Jr., tournament number three seed squaring off against Avni Yildirim. That's going to be a cracking fight next weekend. George Groves and Jamie Cox, two of the best boxers in Britain at the minute. Same way, going head-to-head, -head, defending the world title, George Groves. It's going, to be, it's going to be a great fight to watch. I can't wait for it. Well, Hartel content to continue to box off the back foot. There's a wonderful left hand once again. But the man giving the impression of taking the fight making the fight is the more compact boxer making Hartel miss once again Hartel to be fair to him it's not a criticism just an observation he's boxing to his strengths of height and length but is he conceding ground a bit too readily here as a good right hand gets through from Polyakov he's looking for that left hook to the body Hartel but I think you're right Ronald he's, he's giving away ground a bit too easily and being forced in this rope you, you, you can't win a fight standing against ropes getting taking punishment He's got a box from the center of the ring. Be more dominant with his jab. Like that. That's, that's, that's good work. And that was it, wonderful. You see the way he pivoted around to the left after the three-shot salvo. Just to change the angle for Polyakov and ensure that he wasn't in the same place for the Ukrainian to launch his own offense. Good boxing behind a straight left jab, but he holds his feet once again on the ropes. And that invites pressure from the Ukrainian boxer. Polyakov, um, obviously, he's strong. 
He's a very come forward fighter. However, a criticism from him, he's very one dimensional. Every round will be the same. He does the same thing over and over again. Hartel's got to use his boxing ability, his boxing nous, to overcome that. So, closing seconds of this fourth round. And Hartel just beginning to establish his straight punches and pivots around his man more in the second half of that frame. has guided so many boxers to world championship success under the auspices of the Sauerlands. Hugely respected figure in global boxing, so much so that Arthur Abraham still refers to him as Mr. Despite him being his coach throughout his career. Mr. Wegner is how he's referred to by the man nicknamed King Arthur. What a fighter King Arthur was back in the day. As a middleweight, he was really something special. So into the fifth round of this contest in the super middleweight division. Arthur Abraham with 10 successful defenses of the IBF middleweight title moved up to the super middleweight division for the previous global tournament that we saw in international boxing that was the super six but that took two years to resolve remember the world boxing super series Just single elimination global boxing tournament will be concluded fight, in nine months the final scheduled for early summer next Olympics. year well, depending on your characterization of summer i suppose it's around may june time the schedule the final is scheduled for and this is a substitute contest good work to the body from hartel who is now beginning to hold his ground just a little bit more readily and robustly planting his feet and digging in shots to the body just to deter the forward march of Polyakov but here he comes once again yeah he seems to have got through that early wobble in the first couple of rounds Hartel finally showing a bit, a bit of dominance but again now he's giving his ground up too much Going back to the corner, going back in straight lines as well, which you cannot do against a strong, aggressive, come forth fighter like Polyanov. And when he does that, Hartel is he's retreating practically from corner to corner during that particular move as he goes to the red corner, just to the right of our commentary position. Look at the pressure that Polyakov is able to apply, arcing punches to both body and head, some of them being blocked, but plenty of them are getting through. And again, for the judges that are scoring ringside, he is giving the impression of making the fight. So it's going to be very difficult for Hartel to win the fight adopting this posture. Know that fighters will take a breather in contest scheduled for 10 and 12 rounds. And now Hartel gets back onto the front foot and has success with the jab before going downstairs to the body effectively. And it's the hand speed. The hand speed for me is really impressive from, from Poniakov. Yeah. He's, he's very explosive. He, he pushes back in the ring, back to the ropes. Three, four, five, six punches combinations. He, he lets go, and he, he's winning these rounds. Good left jab to the body, and then a hard right hand dug in beneath the left elbow. And again, what was the ratio there? Maybe six or seven to one. Hartel blocks the right hand by putting his left glove up to his temple. He's trying to fire back, but that was the epitome of first and third boxing there from Polyakov. The busier fighter, not all of them scoring. Hartel coming back with quality of his own, but there is less of it through this point of the fifth round. Working away to the body effectively once again is Polyakov. Closing seconds of round number five. Good right hand over the top once again from the Ukrainian boxer. And that's a very good round for the 36-year-old. There's the crashing right hand over the top.
from Polyakov. He took a while, Hartel. Took a while. He grit his teeth. And he seemed to he seemed to be absorbing the punches better now than he did the first couple of rounds, Hartel. But boxing's not about absorbing punches. It's about hitting and not getting hit. Five rounds completed, a potential five rounds to go. And what is proving to be an entertaining matchup of Olympic quarter finalists. Viktor Polyakov, the 15 year veteran, in what has been a stop start staccato professional career to this point. Hotel boxing well to begin this sixth round, establishing the straight shots. Polyakov lost to the eventual gold medalist in the 69 kilogram welterweight division in Athens as he comes forward with another barrage of punches. Artel trying to fight off the ropes, but again, you just left, you're left with the impression that he was outgunned during that particular exchange. He started really well. Artel started around really well, boxing at range, keeping it along, strong jab, strong backhand, and he's let him come back into it again. It must be very hard to fight a guy like Polyakov for, for, for all for a full three-minute round, but you've got to do it. You can't win a fight against a guy like this standing against ropes getting hit. Another, another thing is very tough. He's got a great defence, Ponikov. A really, really good defence. Nothing gets through. If anything gets through, it's always been ricocheted off gloves and off elbows and off the shoulder. So he's got very good defence. He's got a short body, absorbs it all. A very, very tough man to beat. And Hartel's finding that out right now. Yeah, there's practically a four-inch differential in terms of height. Six feet of Hartel just over against a five-foot-eight of Polyakov. Oof. And he increases that disparity as he wings in a hard right hand to the left flank of Hartel and then comes upstairs with a left hook as well. The final punch of a eye, an eye-catching combination. But by crouching down to increase that disparity, it just makes the target even smaller. And look at the way he's able to bob and weave beneath the punches that Hartel is pushing out. You can visibly see his Hartel's skin getting red around the body. From our vantage point at ringside, Ronald, you can hear the slap that noise makes as well. Again, getting behind those elbows as Hartel takes up residence on the ropes, and that isn't where he wants to be, given the advantage that he enjoys in height, but he's not been able to exploit it consistently through the first half of this contest. The referee just speaking to Polyakov about keeping his punches up. It's been fought in a terrific spirit, this one. No complaining from either boxer. If any transgression has been made. It's a better jab there from Hartel. And again, catching him as he comes in. Been a bit more dominant now, Hartel. Maybe uh, Polykov's having a little bit of a break. A little bit of a breather. He is expending a lot of energy. Then back to the ropes he goes. Well, it's a good left jab to end the round, but one suspects it's another round for Polyakov. And a reminder of our main event coming up next here at the hands Martin Schleyerhaller in Stuttgart, Chris Eubank Jr., the tournament number three seed in the World Boxing Super Series, facing off against the undefeated man out of Turkey, nicknamed the Robot, Afni Yildirim, competing here in Germany for the 11th time tonight. But back to this contest here, this substitute bout for the main event. And after a brisk start, Hartel found himself pinned to the ropes, which allowed Polyakov to help himself once again to both body and head. We mentioned earlier on all about um, body language, how much it can kind of like sway the judges. Hartel looks uninterested. He looks a bit distressed, whereas Polyakov, he wants it. He's ready. He's come over here to uh, set the record straight and get his career back on track. So round seven then, and because this is a substitute contest for the main event, Stefan Hartel, in the event that any super middleweight were to be injured in preparation for tonight's contest, he would have got the call to step in for the main event. So even though he hasn't contested a 12-round contest to this point in his career, you can make no mistake that in the gym, 
he would have prepared himself for that. But here in this 10 round bout, he's having his hand full against Viktor Polyakov, who is winging lefts and rights, both upstairs and downstairs once again. And Hartel is having difficulty keeping the man at bay. Now Polyakov turns out for <laughs> changing things up a little bit. So Hartel trying to establish a firm left jab, but Polyakov proving very difficult to discourage. Incessantly over that front foot and able to get into his own punching range effectively. Four inch disadvantage in reach as well as height is what Hartel enjoyed, but he hasn't been able to make that physical, what we often assume is an advantage in boxing terms count because time and again he's been able to walk into mid and short range and come around the corner with arcing punches working over Hartel to both body and head mouthpiece has been dislodged referee was on it immediately and decided that was an appropriate time to intervene to have the mouthpiece washed out and reinserted but look at that body language he he, he kind of he strolled back to the corner he looks, he doesn't look, he's looking down on the floor, it doesn't look like he wants it. To be a fighter like Polyakov, you need good feet. You need a, you need a box, little movements, box again, you've got to be strong, you can't be too defensive, but you need good feet. I think Hartel lacks that footwork ability. He lacks the side-to-side -side movement. He can do it in little bits like now, but he'll go back to, the, he'll revert back to the corner, back to the ropes, and it gives a round away. And also, it doesn't punch hard enough either, as you can see, one, two, three there, on the arms, on the gloves, does no damage to Polyakov whatsoever. And doesn't stop the man's forward momentum either. Walks his way in once again. Often seen when boxers adopt that turtle shell like defense. That's an untidy tangle as Polyakov just bundles him to the canvas. Wow. It's tiredness, it's, it's tiredness on, on Bob Hartel. You know, it's tired. He, he, again, he looks languid, looks uninterested. And, and he's look, starting to look a bit sloppy. Polikov really is tough as old boots. Your fast hands. Here is again, swinging away. And again, while Hartel is in that defensive posture, square on on the rope, presenting a full-size target. He's getting his hands away now, letting his hands go. And that's a determined combination at the 10-second clapper. But once again, the greater success from my vantage point here ringside has been enjoyed by Polyakov. Well, this was the untidy coming together with the more compact boxer placed his head into the torso of Hartel and just rammed him to the canvas. But Hartel taking up this type of position far too often for his coach's liking. And you saw him during the course of that salvo of punches he was taking. He pointed to his belt line as if they are hitting you low. But yeah. surely you don't want to be distracted like that. You have to be focused on a man in front of you. Exactly. He's looking for excuses. Um, you know, in, in, in the car battle, you bite down the gums and, and you attack back. You don't look for it. You don't look for excuses. You don't look for, for, for help from the referee. The referee can't help you in there. You've got to help yourself. Well, a potential three rounds to go in this super middleweight contest. And Stefan Hartel putting his perfect record on the line. The Olympic quarter finalist from London 2012. Two-time participant in the World Championships as well. Good left jab from Hartel. And after being eliminated by a Brit from global competition at London 2012, it was another Brit who eliminated him at the quarter-final stage of the World Championships in 2013 when Anthony Fowler prevailed over Stefan Hartel in what was an absolute barnstormer of a battle, so much so that Anthony Fowler, even though he prevailed and claimed that hard-fought World Championship bronze, he couldn't contest the semi-final to see how far he could go into the tournament. He came away with third spot on the podium, Hartel. Eliminated from a global competition for the second time in succession by another British boxer. He's since gone on to amass a perfect record in the professional ranks. Since making his professional debut in 2014, the following year, 
after the Kazakhstan World Champs in 2013. But that is in serious jeopardy tonight, I would suggest, because Viktor Polyakov has produced an inspired display thus far. Hartel, to his credit, is trying to get busy with his hands and just having more success keeping Polyakov out of the pocket. Yeah, I've got to, uh, I've got to commend Polyakov's uh, fitness. Now, he's the older guy by seven, eight years. Yeah, he's, he looks fit, he looks strong. He looks fit, he looks strong. And if anything, Hartel's a guy who's breathing a bit heavier. Polikov wants it. He wants it. And as I mentioned earlier, he wants to get his career back on back on track. And he wants to kind of thrust his name back into the upper echelons of the 12-stone super middleweight division. Good right hand over the top once again from Polyakov before going downstairs with the same shot to the body. Good left hook on the inside. Now, Hartel began this eighth round very well indeed. Not powerful punches, but they were point-scoring punches that were keeping Polyakov occupied and out of his own punching range. But through this final third of the eighth round, Polyakov beginning to get his way back into it. Hartel, though, credit to him once again, trying to push out those straight shots and keep this man beyond his own punching distance. Yeah, he's boxing well as well, Hartel. He's, he's not, if you can see, he's moving around quite a lot. He's not giving the guy the opportunity to get him against the ropes or in the corner and unload those heavy blows. But this is all well and good doing it in round eight, but where is this in round one and round two and round five? And as his record suggests, as Polyakov just threatened to stray low with a blow once again. And now he's taking the opportunity to work away on the 10-second clapper. Hartel bites down on his gum shield and tries to fire out his own straight shots. But credit to Hartel for raising the tempo in this eighth round. But is it too little too late? In boxing, you've got to remain disciplined throughout the whole round. You can't do something right for a little bit of the round, then give it away. You've got to do it for every second of the whole three minutes. You go back, you have your rest for a minute, and do it again. Too often now, Hartel's doing nice little spells, but then he'll go and give the whole round away by standing against the ropes, and then Polyakov wade away at his body and his head. Well, this is where Hartel demonstrating some resilience and engaging in the exchange after Polyakov was able to get his own offense away instead of covering up and inviting the pressure Hartel fired back from the space of center ring Well, every second and indeed some more of the 60-second interval being used by the experienced Uli Wegner. Potential two rounds to go in this super middleweight contest. It was mentioned in the fact that Viktor Polyakov lost his Olympic quarterfinal to the eventual champion Bakhti, Bakhti Yop, Arteev of Kazakhstan. And since that win in Athens, Kazakhstan have taken every subsequent welterweight Olympic title. Serik Sapiev emulating Arteev by taking the Val Barker Trophy winner at Val Barker Trophy as well. Sapiev did it in London 2012, Arteev in Athens 2004. And Danny Yelusinov took the most recent edition of the Olympic welterweight title in Rio 2016. Kazakhstan have made it their own national property in the Olympic realm. Three, <laughs> three tremendous fights as well. I remember watching Sapiev, watched the final Sapiev versus Fred Evans in the, in the final Olympic 2012. And Fred Evans, a tremendous fighter. But he just didn't know what to do against Sapiev. I saw Sapiev box Callum Smith as well. I think he boxed Andy Fowler as well. Sapiev really was one of the best amateur boxers I've ever seen in my entire life. Tremendous fighter. Actually spent time in London studying at Brunel University in his post-boxing career. Serik Sapiev, now a prominent figure in the Kazakhstan Olympic-style boxing program. But here in this contest, Stefan Hartel, well, he needs the punch of a lifetime from my vantage point because I think he's trailing heavily with only a round and a half to go. Of course, it's going to depend how the judges see it, but Polyakov has landed the more eye-catching offense. He's been the busier boxer. He's been the man taking it to Hartel. Hartel has had his moments of success, 
They've principally been on the back foot, although at his best in this contest, he's been boxing as he did there, scoring with straight shots and then moving around his opponent to present a different angle. But has he done that often enough? Nice two-shot combination from Hartel. And, and his work rate has been high enough for me. Like, he'll do a nice little bit of work, then he'll push away, then he'll go on the back foot. What you got to do, you got to do a nice bit of work, push away, and go again, and go again, and then go again. That's how you break your opponent down. Has, it's been nice work from Hartel, but it's been too few and too far between for my liking. And you know Podikov, he's, he's going to be there. He'll be there all night long, standing in front of me, a winging away at the body. So closing seconds of this penultimate round. The left hook wasn't too far away from Polyakov. Nice two-shot combination and then a four-shot salvo from Hartel. Good left hook. And again, Polyakov is encouraged by that. And he's using the old veteran's trick of raising the tempo at the sound of the 10-second clapper. Well, he's got three minutes in which to produce something spectacular, Stefan Hartel. But, of course, it's going to depend on how the three judges ringside are scoring this contest. It's been a tough one for Hartel. He's perfect record in jeopardy here for my money. But unless this one ends in the final, inside the final three minutes, we will be going to the scorecards. And that was a left hook just as the 10-second clapper sound, sounded. Did the old um, Polikov, did the old Sugar Leonard. Last 10 seconds, he uh, unleashed out big left hooks and, and, and fast body shots. So still that round for me. Hartel's got, well, three minutes now to save his unbeaten career. Can he find something? Can he pull out the bag? So into the 10th and final round then. Absorbing super middleweight action between boxers of contrasting styles and impe impeccable amateur pedigrees. The tall, lean figure of Stefan Hartel has demonstrated his straight punching prowess on occasions, but all too often he's been in this type of posture. And the volume of punches, the flurries of punches, the cluster of blows have come from the compact figure of Viktor Polyakov. He defends. I mean, Polikov's defense has got to have a, have a mention. He's been very tight. He's been very secure. Nothing has got through whatsoever. If anything does get through, it, gets, it goes through off the shoulders, off the arms, gets ricocheted, takes all the power, power from the punch. He's boxing really well, Polikov, really, really well. If he wins this fight, he'll be a real tough fight for the top, top, top 12 same fighters in the world. Hard right hand dug into the body once again and that rib cage has been repeatedly tenderized throughout the course of this contest Polyakov has targeted, targeted that area relentlessly Hartel to his credit has demonstrated good punch resistance but he has been hit an awful lot and perhaps it's a good thing from his point of view that Polyakov isn't more heavy handed than he actually and his record suggests six stoppage victories in his 13 wins. But Hartel's chin and torso have been checked repeatedly. You see Uli Wegner urging his man forward, saying, get in there. You've got to get busy. I wouldn't want to be Hartel's ribs in the morning. They're going to ache. They're going to be bruised. They're going to be sore every time he breathes. So Polyakov just loading up on his punches now. Looking to produce an eye-catching finish. But in the meantime, while he's loading up, Hartel is shooting the gap, beating him to the punch. But where was this type of tempo and urgency in the first half of the contest? He's rallied well in rounds 9 and 10 as Hartel for my money. But has he done enough to impress the judges and have it be declared in his favor. Good left hook again from Palyakov. Puts Hartel in a little bit of distress. And he'll have learned something about himself tonight, Stefan Hartel, irrespective of the outcome of this contest as their heads come together violently. My goodness. Caused Hartel to win some back away. 
No injury appears to have been sustained. And in the closing seconds, perhaps rather fittingly, it's Polyakov who ends the contest on the front foot, letting his hands go without caution, while Stefan Hartel was covering up and retreating to the ropes. Hartel rather subdued as he makes his way back over to the blue corner. In stark contrast, it's a celebratory mood in the red corner to the right of our commentary position here because their man produced a dynamic display of bustling boxing for the majority of the 10 three-minute rounds. But how will the scoring judges see this one? Oh, nice little headbutt there, you UI Hartel. He, uh, he was right to wince and complain about that when I was a bit naughty. Wasn't intentional though, I think it just, it's just his style. I'm surprised that it took to, to the end of the 10th round before there was a head crash because he, that's the way he fights Polyakov. He comes forward, short, stocky, with his head. I thought he boxed really well today. I thought he boxed really well and he exposed a lot about Hartel. Hartel's going back into the gym and work on the things, work on his weaknesses that have been wise today from this performance. Well, Polyakov dancing in anticipation of having his hand raised as the victor. But remember, Germany hasn't been a happy hunting ground for him to this point in his career. His first loss came here on German soil, as did the only draw on his record. And just to compound his problems, Hartel having difficulty coming out of his own gloves. Well, it's rather subdued over there in that blue corner. Far more effervescent in the red corner. And how will the judges see this one? For what it's worth, I think Polyakov has done enough to be declared the victor here. But we'll head up to Tuka Koistinen momentarily to get the particulars and the official announcement at the conclusion of this 10-round super middleweight bout. Oh. And Stefan Hartel has been declared a majority decision victor. One judge had it a draw, 95-95. The other two judges scoring 96-94 for Hartel. And here in Stuttgart. You can hear what the German fans think of that verdict. But I says, oh.